What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and this is our first major set of patch notes following the launch of Modern Warfare 3. It's been just about a week since the release of the game. As I went ahead and posted on COD Updates' Twitter today, a small update just dropped to address several bug fixes and changes. We'll get to those in a second, but as they mentioned, due to unforeseen issues, sadly. Now, all the changes scheduled for today's update were able to be released. Our teams are hard at work to get key movement changes, multiplayer weapon balancing, zombie gameplay, and stability fixes, plus even more into the next available update that'll probably drop at some point next Wednesday. But they've also linked us the Trello board to go ahead and reflect the status of upcoming fixes. We'll get to that in a second. But taking a look here at our pre-season one patch notes here, November 15th by Sledgehammer and Treyarch. Let's take a look. Players no longer encounter a blank screen or Modern Warfare 3 tiles are expected. Fix an issue with console players who are cross-launching from one game to another. Disbanded parties containing a split screen player. An issue for PC players, which selective installs were not available to play after the installation was completed. A fix has been implemented to solve several crashes that occurred during the application startup sequence. Stability and performance for PC. PC players with NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series GPUs, tongue twister, can now use DLSS 3 across all modes in Modern Warfare 3. With DLSS NVIDIA super resolution and frame generation, DLSS 3 multiplies performance by up to 1.8 times to enhance your PC performance and experience. Fix the bug in which some console players would encounter an error upon being invited to a party. A bug with console players being pushed to the main menu after selecting certain items in the battle pass. Players being kicked back to the multiplayer lobby after attempting to matchmake in any playlist. That was on all platforms, by the way. Addressed account-based issues that prevented offline play. And there we go with stability and performance for campaign. A crash that occurred for PC players during the game's restart sequence after an update. A bug that resulted in players receiving an error message when trying to launch campaign. Dev error 12510 after attempting to start the Operation 627 mission. A bug that forced players to skip cinematic cutscenes when a controller was disconnected. Uh, multiple gameplay related crashes in the Oligarch mission and a crash that occurred after deploying a cruise missile in the reactor mission. Gameplay now. Completion rewards will now be properly awarded if the player closes the app during the credit sequence. One for one ready achievement will not properly track the lowest difficulty used to complete the mission. A bug in which the functionality of all the zip lines and ascenders in the map disappeared after canceling a climb animation. Then we have. A bug in which the player cannot interact with equipment pickups while quick drawing a handgun. Multiplier, uh, multiplier, multiplayer UIX, excuse me, bug fixes here. Enemy player elevation will now be properly displayed on the minimap. Fix the bug in which playlists would disappear from the main menu for some console players. Prompt to view game card on the scoreboard now functions as expected for console players. Prompting a player to a party leader or promoting a player to party leader will no longer allow them to attempt to matchmake for locked playlists. Progression now with weapons. Address an issue that prevented bolt attachments from being unlocked at the expected weapon level for the CAT AMR Sniper. Introduce new requirements for the Priceless Camel Challenge from WSP Swarm SMG. Get 10 operator double kills while in tax stance. Resolve issues that prevented several challenges from tracking completion progress. Uh, corrected unlock challenge tracking conditions for the BBQ operator. Terminal. Players can no longer plant at the A bomb site from an unintended location in SD. Pop off power, players no longer spawn in enemy territory in the invasion mode. TDM increased from 75 to 100, score limit. Ground war, address an issue causing dev error 841 during normal gameplay. But look out for the experimental playlist in the coming days featuring enemy player outlines. Ooh. Okay, chat. We're cooking here. Okay. Enemy player outline, something that apparently content creators got to see at an early capture event or an early play session event, not a capture event, uh, before COD Next. That's interesting. So let's see what that's about. Weapons and attachments. So we got a uh, bit of a buff there or increased hip fire control during sustained fire. Got a buff there for the Bass B. MTZ Interceptor also got a buff there with hip fire control. Increased hip fire control for the Renetti handgun as well. The Jack Frosty Carbine Kit. Uh, Thermo Optic X9 and SZ Vortex 90 optic attachments can now be toggled as expected. That's a bit of a fix. Increased hip fire control during sustained fire for the TYR handgun. Odin's Judgment trigger action decreased trigger response time to the intended 210 millisecond duration. Cosmetics. Gun screen audio will now play as expected upon pressing the preview button. Tracer pack housing operator bundle. Fix the bug in which Alucard was missing his handgun in the operator preview. Zombies. Address an issue that prevented missions in Act 2 from auto from auto queuing while in game. Stability now fix a crash encountered when players navigated to the store or progression tab in the launcher menu while queuing. Various stability and map fixes. 
So that's just about it, it seems, for all of our game modes on November the 15th. Checking out our Trello board now for other fixes. Let's make sure they didn't tweet anything else since then. No, that's about it. Let's check out their Trello board. Uh, global known issues. Players experiencing a match rules data error when attempting to equip an underbarrel to the 762 LMG. Upon consuming double XP, the UI often gets stuck at activating token. I've seen that. I've seen that. They'll say they're working on it. So, fix scheduled already. Just didn't go live today. Remote turret temporarily disabled due to an exploit in multiplayer. Players are experiencing a significant tax burn delay after sliding. Uh, a can be planted from an unintended location on terminal. That's already been fixed. Let me refresh this to make sure it's, it's up to date. Yeah. Okay. Looks like some stuff is just not updated on the Trello board. Players can die instantly upon respawning near a vehicle in the parking lot underpass. Daily challenge is not tracking progression for some players. EOD padding gear is not properly mitigating explosive damage. Hijacked IFF strobe gear not functioning as expected. And SND ping exploits can give players an unfair advantage. Karachi has been temporarily removed from Cutthroat due to mixed teams and initial spawns. Quarry Rundown and Scrapyard are temporarily removed from Hardpoint due to spawn issues after infill field of view can be set higher than expected. Zombies now. They're monitoring, investigating, and they have a scheduled fix for this on all platforms. Uh, Golden Enigma and Golden Ivory do not unlock with certain loadout configurations. Players can fall from the exo helicopter at the edge of the map when departing from the sub pen. I've seen that. Weapon names are replaced with placeholder text when completing a camel unlock in the AAR. The FR556 digital wild wood completion criteria is incorrect. It mentions something about you needing platinum to progress, and that's not correct. Platinum doesn't exist in Mono for 3. It's only a Mono for 2 camel. Players report battle pass XP gains are inconsistent. Players who are eligible for a story mission but do not participate in the story mission Xville are automatically queued into the story if a different squad initiates it. That's, that's sad. Legacy appears to not be dropping a necessary item in the Storm the Castle Act 3 mission, and they fixed the rest of these things here, as you can see. But I believe that is just about it for all of our patch notes. Double checking the Call of Duty Twitter for any other announcements. At time of recording this, for some reason, the Call of Duty Endowment event has not gone live, even though yesterday it was confirmed it was going live. As this video goes up, I'm sure it will end up going live in the next like 14 minutes or so. It's supposed to come out at 12 o'clock central, but I guess they pushed it to one o'clock central. Daylight savings might've screwed them up. But yeah, they mentioned yesterday that this was meant to go live. And in game here, there doesn't seem to be a playlist update at all that I can see. Maybe they'll drop a new playlist update in the next couple of days instead. But that is about it. We hope you guys have enjoyed. And those are our first major set of patch notes following the first week of launch.